Hello, everyone. Uh, let's continue our lecture on the process of personal selling or the sales process with uh, presentation of the product, handling objections, uh, closing, and of course, follow up. So first, let's try to discuss what presentation is. So when we speak of presentation, uh, when you present already your product, supposedly um, by the time the salesman presents the product, she or he will understand his or her customer needs uh, well enough to be sure that he or she is offering a solution to the customer uh, to use okay the presentation should be ta tailored to the customer explaining how the products or product would meet uh, the person or if you're selling to a company the company's need so when we speak of presentation it is actually the time when you show how the product offering okay and the customer's need would match so it is where the research uh, pays off and the idea for the prospect of course would come alive Okay, so that is presentation. So this is actually the time when you tell how the product would actually benefit your customers. So presentation is when you transmit the promotion, promotional message to your customers. You describe the product, you highlight the advantages, you cite examples of, the, of customer satisfaction, and you demonstrate how to reinforce the message. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the different uh, formulas or effective formulas used in sales presentation and dramatization. So, we have IDAS, SNP, SPT, and DDP. First, let's take a look at IDAS. So, A, of course, would stand for attention. So, catching attention. So, you need to catch the attention of your prospect because of course he lends or she lends you his or her trust and confidence so how do you catch the attention of your customers perhaps number one you have to organize your thoughts before you start talking okay so another is you get right to the point do not go or beat around the bush translate what you have to say into be the benefits of the customers perhaps you can ask questions to involve the listeners okay so you need to catch the attention of your customers after catching the attention of course it's also very important that you create interest so i stands for interest so to excite the mental feeling of the prospect through self-interest when we speak of self-interest in personal selling we're talking about the personal experience of the salesman in using the product okay what else emotion your message and of course expression expression is also very important in catching the interest of your prospect so as soon as you get the attention of your prospect when you obtain the attention of your prospect you have to sustain that attention okay by turning that attention into interest so that the prospect becomes engrossed in listening okay next is your d it stands for desire okay so to do this it says here salesman has to appeal to the various buying motives of his prospect when we speak of desire it is it's actually an intense longing um, of course, when we speak about personal selling, an intense longing to own and use a certain product. So persuasion, it says here, is never realized until, uh, unless the salesman is able to produce conviction in order to convince the prospect to buy. So the salesman must help the prospect understand why he or she is buying the product. So sell not the product but sell what the product can do. In other words, you sell okay, how the product would benefit your customers. Okay, so that's desire. A, now in your IDAS, would stand for action. So when we speak of securing action, uh, it refers to obtaining a favorable response of the prospect. 
and it's not enough enough that your prospect would obtain a favorable response but also you need to provide satisfaction that's the s in your idas satisfaction okay how would you provide satisfaction remember we're still in presentation huh you provide answers to the queries of course and objections of your uh, prospect okay now let's proceed to another formula that is your snp spt so you, we have here the salesman factor the need factor product factor service factor price and time factor first when we speak of your salesman factor we're talking about the personality of a salesman so if a personality of a salesman is agreeable trust and confidence of the prospect may be solicited so it's very important to have an agreeable personality next is the need factor of course the salesman should not yet discuss the feature of his product okay but rather what would he discuss um he needs to clarify okay the general importance of the thing or the product that he wants to explain okay that is your need factor and the next is your product factor this is now the time when the features of the product or what the product can do what benefits will the product derive from using the product or what the product is or what makes it different from other competing brands would be now presented to the client or the prospect okay that is your product factor and of course service factor so it pertains to the assistance that the company may provide with the purchase of the product especially if you're uh, selling for example gadget so um, the, the client would like to know if you have warranty right you have warranty or if you are selling maybe appliances they want to know if you have free delivery or free installation or free demonstration okay etc and then finally oh sorry we also have here the price factor so in here the salesman has to begin explaining the effectiveness and benefit of the product especially of course if the cost is really high why because if you explain the, that the customers would gain from using the product they wouldn't mind already the price okay of the product especially if the product is expensive and then finally we have your time factor so timing as they say is everything therefore if you want to call your prospect okay you need to determine what perfect time would they be available so these are some suggestions it could be early in the morning that's nine to one in the case of industrial sales early evening uh, six to eight in the case of household sales or weekend when the prospects are at home on or before payday because it's um sure that they are going to pay your product or when there is a family occasion to celebrate okay so these are your SNP SPT formula. Next, let's proceed to your DDP. Okay, so we have here discussion, demonstration, and of course, participation. First, when we speak of discussion, okay, this is actually the way of assisting the prospect realize the importance and benefit of the product. If you notice, there is an emphasis on discussion of the benefit of the product. They are not so much into discussing the feature of the product, but rather more on the benefit that the product would give or provide to the prospect. Okay, and then next we have demonstration. This is an actual demonstration on how the product is be, would be used. Okay, so the salesman must be trained to do the demonstration and the salesman could actually bring paraphernalia Okay, to aid him or her in demonstration. So what could be the paraphernalia? It could be a flip chart. This could be a colorful illustration of the product uh, that's used to explain 
perhaps the benefits and features of the product. We also have here a uh, big and wide mop. So it's like a brochure designed for the use of um, what selling books or encyclopedia. Okay, so by education consultant. And then finally, your P in your DDP is participation. So it's also very important that you allow your clients or your prospects to participate in your presentation. Okay, now let's take a look at your four P's of presenting product. So first is prepare. First P is prepare. So you have to be ready to meet the expected challenges in introducing new buyers to your product or service. So this involves knowing your product inside and out. So knowing the industry, knowing what the competition has to offer and is saying about your product. So it's very important. Another is, of course, practice. Okay. So knowing what to do and doing it entirely, um, sorry, knowing what to do and doing it are entirely different things. Even musicians, of course, and athletes and professionals practice. Okay. As they say, this is an old cliche, practice makes perfect. However, it's very, very important that when you present a product to your clients or prospect cl uh, clients, you have to appear confident and you have to know what you're doing. So uh, practice what to say and how to say it. Even your gesture would be very, very important. So you can practice it with a partner and be willing to accept, of course, constructive feedback. Okay. If you do not have a partner, perhaps you can make use of mirror. But it's not enough that you just simply practice. You have to what? Perform. Okay. Sabi niya dito, practice is great and important, but nothing beats delivering your presentation to a living, breathing, qualified client. Okay, your friend, your mirror, or your video recorder won't be investing in your product. So you have to get some real life experience and, of course, feedback. Okay. All right. Next, of course, perfect. So another P of your uh, product presentation is perfect. Meaning to say you should not stop learning. So it says here the top pros never stop learning from their experiences or from the experiences of others. So they are constantly on the lookout for those little uh, nuances or other or sorry or even major overhauls that could provide a better experience for the buyer and better results. So you have to keep on learning. Okay. Now, let's take a look at okay, some methods and strategies in sales presentation. So, firms have developed different methods or styles, strategies of sales presentation. So, what are these? Number one is stimulus response method or the canned approach. So, basically, we're talking about a me memorized sales talk or a prepared sales presentation. Okay, um, in here, the salesperson would talk without uh, knowing the prospect's need. So, for example, okay, this is usually used by telemarketing people. When they call their prospects, of course, they do not know the prospect. So, they simply tell or talk about the product with a memorized sales stock. Okay, next is we also have here your formula method, okay, or formulated approach. So what are these formula that they are going to use? It could be your IDAS, DDP, or SP and SPT. SP and P, S and P, sorry, SPT. Okay, so it is based on stimulus response that all prospects are similar. It's quite um, a bit similar with the first uh, strategy that is your stimulus response or 
can't approach, diba? So, it is used when time is short and prospects are similar. However, the shortcoming of this is that they use the same standard formula for different prospects. So, parang hindi na siya personalized. Okay, yan. So, there you go. Next is, we have your need factor method. So, in here, um, this is an interactive sales presentation wherein first, they would find the prospect's need. How? By asking questions and listening, of course. They will use the FAB approach, your feature, advantage, and benefits. Okay, it's quite effective because it focuses on customers so what is this fab approach we learned this in your fun bus 200 we have the feature advantages and benefits so when we speak of the features we're talking about the basic attribute of the product what is in the product diba? what is the product made of and then you present the advantages we're talking about what the features of the product can do and then the benefits we're talking about um how would these um, advantages address the specific needs or wants of the target client or target market? Okay, so that is your fact. All right, next is of course using demonstration another strategy or method is using demonstration so uh, sales presentation can be improved by demonstration okay demonstration is actually one of the most important tools in presentation okay for example test drive of cars demonstration of industrial products or etc so, the benefit of using demonstration is that buyer's objections are cleared. When we speak of objections, although we will discuss that later on, when we speak of objections, sometimes these are um, queries or questions of uh, customers. Okay, they want to learn more about the product. That's why sometimes they object or sometimes they, they want to ask a lot of questions, okay? So it improves the buyer's purchasing interest and the prospect can experience, of course, the benefit of the product. Okay, next. This is also very, very important, okay? The do's and don'ts of selling. So number one, never have a poor telephone or in-person etiquette. When you're talking on the phone, please do not chew chewing gum. Okay. Do not also have loud music or telev uh, television blaring in the background. Uh, it's very unethical or it's very uh, rude to do that. Uh, if you are talking in person, please do not keep on looking at your watch because it seems as if you're not interested or you keep on looking at your cell phone during a bit meeting. Okay, it's very rude. So do not do that. Next is do not jump to conclusions or read mine. You cut off whatever the customer is saying. Parang pinapangunahan mo siya. Okay, it's also very important that you stay positive, never be negative. And do not discuss anything inappropriate. There are uh, clients or customers who are very sensitive with some issues, okay? Like, for example, politics, religion, um, etc. So, please do not discuss inappropriate um, issues. Another is that do not claim to know. Uh, the answer to something when you actually do not know. So, th there's absolutely no shame in telling someone that you do not know the answer, but you will get the answer as soon as possible. Okay, do not pretend. Okay, uh, never ask stupid questions. Okay, Sh you should ask questions maybe related to the product, but do not ask silly questions, especially the personal life of your uh, prospects and then never be defensive okay and never get too comfortable when we say never get too comfortable actually we're talking about um you know if you have already your prospect do not be comfortable in having one client or one prospect only okay if you have a good client base do not be um 
do not stop prospecting in other words do not stop prospecting you should always focus in bringing in new prospect okay so what makes an effective presentation so this is very very important you have to know your target audience so before you present your product you should know your target audience. Are they your group of colleagues? Are they board members? If they're board members, you have to be well uh, presentable. You have to be dressed appropriately, okay? If they're also the head of the company. And then another is your research about the product. In other words, sabi nga nila, know your stuff, okay? Uh, you want to you know prepare yourself if there are queries about your product you're supposed to answer them uh, with appropriate answers so you have to research on your product or your concept and then it's also important to rehearse okay so spend time going through the complete presentation from start to finish and then make the presentation out loud so just like your um What's this? Your essay writing. There should also be an introduction, the meat of the topic, or, and of course your conclusion. So number four here is that there should be an agenda that you should follow. Break your presentation into three sections. Introduction, the main topic, and of course conclusions. And then another is that, okay, you have to remember that confidence sales so you have to be confident okay if you're not confident about your product your clients would also feel your um you know uh, if the, your clients would feel if you are not sure about the product that you are selling and do not get sidetracked okay so if questions arise during your talk know how to pause the show and then answer the question but you have to get back on the right track uh, away right away sorry so it is too hard to get your momentum um, but you have to be on track okay so that so that you will not get off topic and then you can use real life examples okay in presentation it could help you also in your presentation okay so it's easier to see how this might fit your personal scenario if you actually use uh, real-life examples wherein your audience can actually relate relate to. Uh, do not try to be too convincing. Okay. Uh, present your material as if it is the most exciting product or idea ever. You can bring your knowledge and enthusiasm uh, to make a sale. Okay, do not be too convincing. Why? Because uh, if you have to convince your audience, okay, their opinion would remain uh, the same as when they sat down. Meaning to say, kung ano yung opinion ng um, client mo or audience mo, okay, hindi mababago yun. Uh, it would remain the same. Pero... Okay, you can just present your product in the most exciting way or most um, enthusiastic way. But do not try to be too convincing kasi magdududa din yung client mo. Okay, just be yourself. Alright, next. So let's talk about your objections. So what are objections? How do we handle objections? When we speak of objections there these are basically statements or questions or actions by the prospect that indicate resistance or unwillingness to buy but at least not yet meaning to say okay uh, there might be an indication that they resist or they are unwilling to buy but okay you might still convince them and there are valid objections but there are also excuses we'll talk about that later on okay so without sales resistance it says here there wouldn't be any need for salespeople. so the first person who reacted or who reached sorry the prospect would make the sale so serious negotiations seldom begin until the prospects objections 
actually surfaced. So, there are reasons for objections. So, people will almost always raise objections even if they are totally sold out on the product. Why? Because they want reassurance, okay, that the product will perform as promised. What else? The prospect may have been trained to raise objections, especially lawyers, of course, as a matter of buying technique or negotiation strategy. Another is that the prospect may lack the authority, authority to buy but covers up this fact by raising several smokescreen objections. Okay, so there are two types of objections. So we have valid objections and we have excuses. So when we speak of your valid objections, it definitely deserves a salesman uh, salesman's attention but if you are talking about excuses okay the salesman has to simply get rid of the sales interview so but whether the objection is valid or not the salesman has to be prepared for whatever consequences that may arise okay so uh, a valid objection is asked by the prospects because of the following reasons so they need reassurance we mentioned that earlier about the uh, product that they buy what else they want to clear doubts in their mind they need also assistance okay in terms of perhaps using an application of the product and then they want to clarify perhaps deliveries warranties okay terms of payments product adjustments okay and similar services what else Okay, uh, if it's an excuse, there are these are also some of the common reactions of the prospects for excuses. Okay, they would probably just say that, oh, we just bought this product of the same kind. Diba? Or maybe they will say a friend from abroad gave, you know, me a similar product as a souvenir. Or the prospect has no money and they would say payday is still far away. Or a friend or relative is also a sales representative of the same company. So these are excuses. Uh, the prospect will have to consult with her husband or wife regarding the product. So you have to determine common reactions of prospect who are just, you know, reactions of prospect who are asking for excuse. Right. So additional reaction of excuses okay okay now let's try to distinguish objections from excuses so a valid objection would ask questions directly that would refer to the product on the other hand it is an excuse if the question would be irrelevant to the product a valid objection is that a prospect um, it's, it's the prospect's way of saying, uh, I want to make sure that I will make the right decision. But it is an excuse if the pros uh, prospect's way of saying that, sorry, but I cannot buy now, something like that. And then it's a valid objection if they need immediate answer and explanation from the salesman. It's an excuse if the answer to their questions could be set aside. So how do you uncover objections? Say that you do not quite understand the objections. Ask what exactly uh, he or she wants to know. Use testimonies of people who had the same objections and then offer to create solution by solving his or her objections. Okay, now let's try to take a look at other types of um, customer objections so we have here objection against the salesman why because the salesman may look disagreeable to the prospect the salesman may not be businesslike in his approach okay thus antagonizing the prospect what else um, objection against need the prospect may not need the product yet at the time when the uh, salesman or salesperson visited the client next is objection against the product the prospect may be convicted or uh, sorry convinced of the product's potentials but he has been using different brands another is objection against service this service 
uh, this refers sorry to sales assistance provided by the company like for example deliveries installations demonstration warranty and similar services okay another is objection against price so maybe or perhaps okay um, the client or the prospect is saving uh, and um, maybe they are not yet ready to purchase because they do not yet have the money okay and then objection against time the salesman may not meet any objection against time it will be best for him to approach his prospect at the right time okay now let's take a look at the methods of handling objections Okay, one method in handling objection is pass over or ignore the objection. So the salesman does not need to answer immediately an excuse or alibi objection of the prospect. So he can just, what, pass over or he can ignore okay. However, the salesman must be on guard at as the same question may be raised again. Yan. Next is your yes, but technique. So this method of handling objection is quite similar with what? Agree in part, but later prove your point. So as not to hurt the feeling of your prospect. Okay. So yon, yes, but technique. Um, the salesman, though, has to also explain how his or her product differ from others so that the prospect realizes the advantage of the proposal. Okay, so you can, perhaps the client might say, oh, I'm, the product that I'm using is really good. So you can say, ah, yes, it's, it's okay, it's good. But if you try our product, it will give you additional benefits such as this and that and that. Yeah. And then next is your boomerang method. So in here, you're throwing back the question or objection of the prospect so that the prospect would realize the importance of the product. However, you have to be very careful. You have to know how to be diplomatic. Okay. And always consider the tone of your voice. Like, for example, um, maybe in asking question regarding the safety of the drinking water for example you're selling water purifier diba? so maybe you can ask a question like um sir do you trust your faucet to be giving you um uh, to be giving your drinking water safe from pollutants something like that okay all right next is your compensation method usually this is used by um people who are in the insurance business diba? so this type of objection is usually countered by compensation why maybe some clients might think that the product is very expensive however okay you can just tell all the compensations that the client would receive in the future just like our example here Okay, yeah. Anyway, ma'am, Prudential Life will give you 200% refund of the total contract price 20 years after your child's graduation from college. Imagine you're able to send your child to the university and have him graduate for free. Yeah, and compensation. And then we also have here the direct question technique. So when faced with difficult uh, question regarding the non-effectiveness of your product or, or of the product, the salesman may be caught unprepared. Therefore, the salesman has to train himself to develop a habit or the habit of asking questions. Example, if the prospect complained, I got sick of loose bowel movement for two days when I took the medication. So the salesman okay, would ask, okay, how how did you take the medication do not just say immediately that that oh maybe it's a side effect of your medication so you have to learn how to ask questions so yeah okay next let's take a look at okay other methods of handling objections 
Okay, so welcome objections as challenge. Be empathic towards objection. Develop the habit of asking questions and answer them with uh, product benefits. Use examples, of course. Agree with your proposal and use even sales point, proven sales point, sorry. Uh, answer valid objections and pass over an, an important ones. Use the yes but or question technique whenever possible in preference okay uh, for valid objection you can use compensation method okay and then um, answer the final major objection using the boomerang technique and try to close the seal after handling objections so this is the next process closing the sales and of course follow through or follow up okay so at a certain point it says here in the sales process your customer will be ready to make purchase so let's try to learn how to close a sale and of course the goals in closing a sale so when we speak of closing the sale it is the sales term which refers to the process of making a sale and it's the final step of a transaction. So if a salesman can have the prospect sign a policy or maybe issue a check or pay in cash, the sale is consummated or meaning to say the sale is closed. Okay, so how can we or how can a salesperson close a sale so there are concepts and techniques in closing sales number one is you have to know the buying signal of your customers okay so the buying signals meaning to say the the things that the customer or customers would say or do to indicate readiness to buy you can also attempt a trial close a trial close this is an initial effort to try to close a sale okay so there are tips in closing the sale so recognize closing opportunities help customer make a decision create an ownership mentality avoid threatening words okay it's emphasized re-emphasize avoid threatening words and of course you have to pace your closing let's try to look at other buying signals so uh, these are some positive buying signals that's done by your customers uh, positive body language like for example they they nod when you talk about the product they smile okay they lean towards the conversation okay so it means that they are interested what else they they spend a lot of time looking at your offer and then they keep coming back for more this is actually a good sign because it means that they are interested what else they ask questions and details about the product so questions like uh, do you have another color okay how how long does the you know course go for all right so there something like that um what else uh they ask about the price yes so when a customer volunteer to ask about the price they believe the solution is a good fit meaning to say the product offers the solution that they need okay so there you go and the price question is basically to validate the exchange of value and then they ask about the warranty or terms of the product next is that okay they ask about the start dates or delivery times okay they will also suggest alternatives okay so after perhaps you give recommendation your customer might suggest an alternative solution which tells you exactly uh, what they're ready to buy uh, which tells you exactly that they are ready to buy now something like that and then they ask about the payment method yeah okay what else they ask about your experience or the history of the company it means that they are really interested to buy your product and then they ask for repeat information okay they ask for um repeat information about the product 
okay they want to reassure themselves that they are making the right decision and then they talk about how they will use the product so if your customer is picturing the solution and visualizing um, already in using the product then they're most likely that they're already convinced about the sale and then of course they ask to buy so asking to buy when the customer asks you directly if they can buy or tells you that they're ready to start okay using the product then you already close the sale all right but there are reasons why salesmen are afraid to close a sale so they do not like to hear negative response they are ashamed to ask for the order they feel that they are intruders and are begging for a living okay what else they forget to close the sale mm, they get confused with the objections what else the salesman or the salesman um, expect the sale to automatically be consummated of course that's not the case okay so let's take a look at the methods of closing the sale so close an objection also called trap close this is sim similar to boomerang method of handling objections okay we also have physical close uh, the salesman simply puts out the purchase uh, contract to be signed by the prospect or takes out his pen and order his prospect to sign the check. Or you can use minor point alternative close. Uh, it helps the prospect make minor decisions so that the salesman can narrow down the choice for him. So if the salesman can assist the prospect choose between things from another, the salesman can easily be oh sorry the sale sorry can easily be closed okay and then testimonial close so you use uh, testimonies or statements of happy users of your product so these are persuasive proofs of satisfaction derived from the use of the product or you can use the waiting list close or standing room on leads so if the salesman can tactfully explain that the company stocks are limited, the prospect may opt to act now. Yan. Ito na lang po yung natitira, ma'am. Yan, ganun. So ang mangyayari, yung prospect mo, gugustuhin bilhin na agad yung product mo. Okay, so another is promotion closed. Uh, close. So use of inducement. Okay, it naturally urges a prospect to buy immediately. So, this inducement may what? Include price off. Oy, on sale ito, pag bibilhin mo ngayon, uh, mababawasan yung presyo niya, something like that. Or product premiums, or you can give, you know, uh, freebies, giveaways, okay, or maybe raffle draws, trips abroad, okay, and similar promotion items. And then finally, you can use USP or your unique selling proposition. Uh, you differentiate your product from the competing brand. Okay, if the USP can be reserved the, by the salesman to culminate the sales effort, it can be effective to obtain favorable response of the prospect. Okay. And then, of course, this is the final step. So, if the client would buy a product, you, it should not stop there. Okay, why? Because it's also important that you determine if your customers are satisfied. So, the sale, oh, it says here, the close of a sale does not mean the end of it. It is just the beginning. The salesman must guarantee a satisfied end permanent customers of the company he represents he then has to keep taking care of the customer's needs so that the customer will know that his interests are the salesman's concern yeah so the salesman can follow through with a thank you or maybe an installation operation of the product additional orders referrals or perhaps a lasting friendship okay so this ends our midterm lecture um, 
good luck for your midterm examination.